It's Tuesday, August 5th, and welcome to your source of comic book news and culture. Every week, we've got your quick dose of comic knowledge that will prepare you to step in your comic shop on Wednesday. This week, things are done a little differently. Kevin's away on vacation. We thought he deserved to get away, but don't worry. He may be away, but he's still working. Up first, we've got the rundown of what you can expect to find in shops this week. After that, we'll check in with Kevin in Vacation Land for our pick of the week, and then we'll check in with Nick for a look at this week's headlines. Kevin coming to you from vacation land, that's Maine for those of you that don't know, with a pick of the week. Like Mike said, I'm away on vacation, but that doesn't stop the comics. So while I am away, I'll be picking up my comics at Wits End Comics, Collectibles and Games in scenic Augusta, Maine. So what's our pick of the week? Cross number zero. Garth Ennis is back at Avatar, and this time he's really going all out. Cross will be taking a look at what is the worst that man is capable of. An outbreak of madness is ravaging the world with an infection that turns its victims into remorseless, homicidal maniacs sounds right up Ennis's alley. Combine that with the incredible art by Jason Burroughs, a frequent collaborator of Ennis, and we have the recipe for the next great post-apocalyptic survival horror book. Hide the Kids, Cross promises to be another intensely graphic peek into the twisted imagination of Garth Ennis. All right, next up, it's back to New Jersey for Nick with the News. Hi, I'm Nick, and these are your headlines for Tuesday, August 5th, 2008. Like Kevin said, it's vacation time, so if you haven't noticed, we're doing the news a little different this week. So let's start off with our two big stories, which continue to be the San Diego Comic Con and The Dark Knight. Let's handle The Dark Knight first. In its third week of release, The Dark Knight was again the number one movie, with a $43.8 million gross, narrowly beating out The Mummy 3 with $42.4 million. This would put it as the second best third weekend ever, behind Spider-Man's $45 million in 2002. But its estimated $395 million domestic total means it will break the $400 million mark on Monday, only 18 days after its release. By comparison, Shrek 2 took 43 days. So another record-breaking weekend, and one that comes as part of a record-breaking summer. Record-breaking because if you add the combined totals of all the comic book movies released this summer, it is just over $1 billion. Like I said, the other story that continues to dominate is the San Diego Comic-Con. If you looked at most of the comic news sites, you would still think it was going on. The convention generated so much news that most sites, yours truly included, are still trying to catch up. So don't be surprised if the next few weeks is peppered with con coverage. But why wait weeks? We can get a sampling right now. IDW had some interesting projects, including Darwin Cook's upcoming adaptations of the Parker novels by Richard Stark, as a series of graphic novels, and they plan to release comic book biographies of both presidential candidates Barack Obama and John McCain. Also expect vice president bios for Mitt Romney and Hillary Clinton. And also expect George W. to visit the Riverdale Gang, where W. and Jughead enter a fried fish eating contest in the upcoming issue entitled In Cod We Trust. Cloak and Dagger will be making a comeback courtesy of Valerie Durazio. And the architects of Marvel's Annihilation space operas will be again examining the deep space corners of the Marvel Universe in War of the Kings, featuring everyone from Vulcan to the Inhumans. Expect quite a bit of Terminator action in the next year. 
The Sarah Connor Chronicles on Fox, Terminator Salvation on the big screen, and a few comics from Dynamite starting in November with Terminator Infinities and a Terminator Salvation prequel from IDW. Oh, and don't forget the awesome Terminator Omnibus from Dark Horse. Wow, so many versions of Judgment Day. Which to choose? Which to choose? Part of Marvel's big news at San Diego was the announcement of Stephen King's N, which we will be taking a closer look at in the weeks ahead. But they didn't forget about King's other big book, The Stand, set for release in September, and they're following up with a trailer that hits this week. The Stand, Captain Trips, will hit shops midnight September 10th. In some non-con news, we reported a few weeks back about the departure of Chuck Dixon from the Bat Books and DC. His replacement on Robin was announced to be Fabian Neciaza, and it looks like he'll be on the book for the long haul. Expect some twist to come to Tim Drake's world post-Batman R.I.P., including what looks to be a team-up with... The Penguin? Say it ain't so, Drake! Though it was talked about quite a bit at the con, the upcoming Wonder Woman DVD now has a public trailer and Yahoo Movies has it up. It will be interesting to see how well it does in comparison to the last few DC direct-to-DVDs, which featured Superman, Batman, or the JLA. Alright, that's it for the news this week. Vacation will be over, so expect me back in the Variant Edition newsroom next week. Up next is Lewis with a first look at a few books you can expect to find in your shops this week. Alright guys, Lewis here from Variant Edition, coming at you from my secret back cave layer somewhere in Jersey, somewhere in Rahway, Jersey, somewhere. Can't tell you where. Um, <laughs> coming at you with this week's first looks, because um, Kevin's on vacation, but we're still committed to bringing you your timely episode, so here I am. No mic, though, so I'll try and make up for the funny compensation awkward moments with myself and my toys. So, so here we have um, Venom, issue one. Uh, which is basically a look back at Venom's, not or Ven not Venom, but more like Eddie Brock's childhood, and not so much origin, but more backstory to the character, because all we, the Eddie Brock we knew was the guy who just ended up being Venom and just became this crazy guy hell-bent on killing Peter Parker, but what was Eddie before he was, you know, the reporter and other photographer at the Daily Bugle? So this is him as a child. So we see Eddie, he's kind of got a little twisted mentality. You see the opening sequence in the book, his, his little girl loses her cat, he's actually got the cat stored away in his basement in a box, so he looks like the hero. And it's very awkward, and there's like this nasty little creepy shine in his eye. It just makes you think twice about this guy. But all in all, it's a very cool book. It shows a very early encounter between him and uh, Spider-Man, which basically I think sets the you know the tone of where the relationship comes to you know meeting ends again later on in the future when you know he obviously becomes Venom, and they're enemies for life. But all in all, the book's really good. It's got a really sickly tone to it. There's like an underlying. Um, kind of scheme of like what happened to his mom it's like apparently she died at childbirth giving birth to eddie but it looks like there might be more to it than that and um the really big religious upplay in this book but all in all i think it's a really good book it's gonna be really interesting to see what eddie was like before he became the eddie brock we knew so all in all good book i definitely recommend it next book we have is um hulk issue five with the throwdown with the lord of asgard i'm talking about the lord our lord my lord of asgard um doesn't go down the way you think it would. I'm not going to give too much away, but it, the fight doesn't end or turn out the way anyone thinks it would. Do you think it'd be blows and, you know, mountain shattering and, you know, New York exploding? And it's really not. It's just a battle of, uh, I want to say, intelligence and wit. So that definitely does not pan out the way it goes. Um, a bomb, the new abomination, comes in and kind of helps Bruce, the Green Hulk, not Red Hulk, because we still don't know who that is. Even though we all think it's Doc Samson, I don't think it is. Um, he's helping Bruce, and it's basically an all-out brawl issue. Red Hulk is just dying to kill Green Hulk. We don't know why. We don't know who it is. So until we find out who it is, there's like no really direct motive as to who we can figure out it is. So all in all, this book is still a little too over the top for Jeff Loeb, you know, with the way things turn out with the the fight. But it's still an entertaining book, and you just you're only reading it because I really want to find out what happens. You know, <laughs> it's like it gives basically. Um, Ed McGinnis is an excuse to do all splash pages all the time, which I don't mind at all. It's great. It's worth the $2.99. But finally, your last book, we have um, Ultimate Origins Issue 3. Now, if you read the first two, they're kind of spotlighting major characters in the Ultimate Universe, and they're kind of overall um, part in the scheme of how the Ultimate Universe came to be. First issue spotlighted um, Nick Fury and Wolverine, 
and um, Captain America, and it shows actually how Nick Fury is a little bit more than he seems. He actually was part of the Super Soldier program and is one of the few African Americans that survived it. So he's not completely human, but he's not superhuman like Cap is. There's a little more to Nick Fury than we all know, but we have yet to see where that goes. Um, we all learned that in this issue, Eric Lenschner, Magneto, is actually the one who frees James Howlett, Logan, whatever you want to call him, Wolverine from the Weapon X project. He goes in there, he kills his mom. He kills his dad, and it's 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 insane. Like the revelations that are happening in this book, it's like wow, why, and what does it all lead to? And the interesting part that the book hits is that when he first meets up with Professor X, and the relationship they strike up, and the meeting in the Savage Land, which could probably is going to trace back to the last issue of Ultimates Volume Three that Jeff Loeb is writing, because it's like there a lot's going on in the Savage Land. So all in all, a lot's happening in this book, and it's all coming at you really fast, and. It has a lot has to do with this oblique disc, which has apparently been there since the beginning of the Ultimate Universe. So I think there may be like a uh, a creation, some type of theme going on here. Like this universe wasn't created like the way we thought it was. Like you know, a Big Bang theory. Maybe someone had a hand in this. Maybe there was an actual being that said, "I'm bored. Let me create a, a race of humans and see what it happens." And I give them some superhumans. You know, well, I don't know. We'll see. It looks really interesting, but this book is definitely picking up. A little shoddy on the art, Butch Guy says the proportioning on some of the panels for Carol Danvers, her head was really slanted. I don't know if you go back to the first three, four, five pages. Really messed up. Still over a good artist. You know, he's a good artist, but I think maybe the way it went to the, the printer got messed up. But um, overall, good book, good writing. I can't wait to see how this, you know, miniseries ends up because it's going to play into Ultimatum. And there's big things coming into the universe this whole summer and next year. So I'm really excited. And there's your first look for this week. And hopefully we'll be back from the shop next week all right that's it for this week's variant edition tuesday consider this our special on location episode see kevin wasn't kidding when he said we're going to stay on schedule no matter what we're dedicated but since kevin isn't here i should probably get going while everyone else is away i'm here at classic comics in Rawway, new jersey so remember to check out classiccomics.com to find out how you can save 20 percent on your comics and also check out variantedition.com for all the ways to watch and download our show Okay, I think I got to get out of here. We'll be back next week. Later.